Hello, welcome to the Counterattack playthrough series. We're continuing with our playthrough of the fifth tutorial scenario of Operation Dauntless. It is now turn four. The British reset phase is commencing. Okay, the uh, British got their artillery back, plus the Germans got um, back an 88 millimeter battery, 105 millimeter battery, and some 150 millimeter Nebelwerfer rocket artillery. Okay, and then um, the British need to draw a asset, and uh, there's one on the turn track, so I threw in there. Let's see what we get. Ooh, got something again. What is that? That is it. Bombers. Ooh, nine. Okay. Um, if I recall correctly, bombers uh, cannot be used to attack something adjacent to friendlies, so um, they'll have to just target, you know, some back area unspotted, I guess. Um, okay. I think that's the reset phase. British action phase. Let's try to recover this guy. Uh, mod he has to roll a six. Modifiers. He's in a village. Plus one. He's four more hexes from the enemy. Plus one. Um, he's not adjacent to an enemy unit. And he does not have an enemy unit in line of sight. Plus one. He is within uh, supply range. so or He can trace supply, so no negatives there. Let's roll one die. It's a plus three. Looking for six, at least six. Roll the one. That's sad. So I want to get that point back. Okay, so let's go back up here. What kind of moves do I want to do? Well, what I think I want is to attack this guy here as much as I can. But also, maybe try to get some guys over to this bocage. They're gonna have to cross some fields here, but if they can get into this bocage, that's just one more point they're taking away from the Germans. Um, so I think we'll do that as well. So what can I cram in up here? Well, um, I can try to get some machine guns up here. I can't put any more infantry companies up there. So these machine guns, they're gonna be behind enemy lines. They can't see anything. They're behind friendly lines. It's a one, that's a two. Okay, and then this machine gun, same thing. It's just gonna pile in with these guys. Trying to get as much of an attack as I can into that location. Okay, then um, these guys, I'd like them to run across, I guess, out like this. Should I suppress these guys first? They're gonna be doing friction fire attacks at three, most likely. Um, yeah, I didn't use my heavy mortars last time. I have four heavy mortars, range 11, attack 5. Um, the defensive benefits here are minus 2, spotters adjacent, so um, that'll be just a straight minus 2, I believe. Let me just double check here. Yeah, minus 2 for terrain. Oh, company size unit, so that drops down to minus 1. And yeah, I think that's it. So just minus one, plus five, I like it. Got a nine, um, plus five is 14, minus one is 13. So basically I need a 10 or more. Got a 10, so that goes to 14. We get a suppression marker out. Got two more guys to fire. Seven and four. Okay, and all these guys are now marked fired. Okay. Um, one nice thing about suppressing them, so I could I was, could have tried to harm them as well, but uh, there's probably a very slight chance I didn't actually calculate it. But uh, uh, by being suppressed, they cannot do ranged attacks. Now they can call in indirect fire though, but uh, I think I'm okay with that. So these two guys. Do I want to move them together or one by one? Move them together. So you're going to go one, two. Okay, so now these guys can see them. And do they want to call in some attacks? They're going to call in these two infantry guns. So I'll just go mark them fired. Each one has a firepower of two. Um, what are we doing here? The spotter is not adjacent, so it'll be a minus one. Um, 
It's a company size unit, plus one, so they cancel out. It's in a field, plus one. Ah, um, I forgot about this in the pyre turns. Uh, the designer pointed it out to me that friction fire, which is what we're doing here, um, the size of the unit doesn't matter in friction fire. So I don't get the plus one, So, but it's still netted out to zero. Um, the rationale for friction fire not affecting company size units is that because they're a bigger unit, they're more likely to keep on pushing through without taking heavy losses, uh, something like that. So anyway, uh, looks like it's a net zero. So we're going to try to roll. We have to roll 12s. Uh, so two, one in 36 chances of stopping those guys. And I guess they're firing on them as they enter the hex, as opposed to as they go in that to hex. Cause yeah, we don't, we don't even know where they're going as the Germans. So firing on them as they enter the hex. Eight. Ten. Oh well, okay, and then they go ahead and move on in here. They're now safe from friction fire and range attacks because no one else can see them. Uh, that might be debatable. Um, okay, what about this guy here? I'd love him to go pile in with them, but he can't. So I guess he'll just stay out of sight until Oh, you know what? What am I doing? We need to keep this hex here. And I don't want the Germans to try to make an assault here, so let's let's bolster, bolster that guy a little bit. This might be silly. Loading up some anti-tank guns. One, two. Three. Four. Five. Five and a half. Six, seven. So, just trying to get a little more oomph into this hex. Um, how are these mortars back here? They have a range of six. One, two, three. Okay, they got everything covered. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think, I think we're ready to exit the action phase and start the combat phase. I'll go ahead and reset all these guys. Germans are in a whole lot of trouble here. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do one combat. This is the target hex. All these guys are now spotted. These two hexes are attacking. The British support is going to, again, be overwhelming. Um, let's see, where can I throw this stuff down? Can I get the, all their artillery at their disposal? Throwing it in. Okay. Um, this bomber can't be part of the combat, but it, uh, one other thing about bombers is they can only fight in the combat phase. So um, I guess we're going to, I think, we're gonna try to attack back here first. So that'll be our first attack. Then we'll do the combat. Okay, and then, um, I know I'm kind of doing this weird order here. So, and then the Germans will throw all they have into that combat as well in terms of that artillery, plus um, these two mortars up here. So we'll do the bomber attack first. Just want to double check on the rules of the bomber and then we'll get going. Okay, so uh, the bomber is kind of like a normal attack. Um, if it's self-spotting, it gets a minus one. However, this guy is spotting across this hex spine through the river. So he is uh, one level up, I think. It's hard to see here. Oh, uh, well, the center hex of the, the center dot of this hex requires line of sight to cross the boundary of the river. And the river has like tree line all the way down it. So all uh, waterways, including this river, uh, the edge blocks line of sight. So I guess he does not have line of sight. There's no eyelash symbols indicating a slope there. So um, I guess they're not spotted after all. Okay, so it's gonna be minus one for he has to self spot. And then um, let's see. Minus one for, um, yeah, I guess there's, there's, that doesn't include a company. Uh, minus one for being dug in. Yeah, I think that's it. Minus one for being dug in and minus one for self spotting. We're rolling a nine, uh, adding nine to our roll, I should say. Ah, that could have been a nice attack. Four plus nine is 13. Uh, minus. 
One for being dug in, minus one for self-spotting. Yep. Okay, so this guy goes onto the, uh, oh, out of the game. He's out of the game. Uh, because he has to go two turns in the future and there's only one turn left. Okay, so these guys successfully weathered that. Uh, if there was flak, it would also um, limit that unit's attack. Same thing with that fighter bomber attack earlier. Okay, now for um, the combat. Let's just do all this stuff here. I neglected to say I want all these guys for the Germans making range attacks against this guy. You can only do a range attack of zero in support of a combat when you are not in an enemy zone of control. A few subtleties there, but... Um, okay, so let's get going. We're going to do these sevens. The modifiers are minus one, minus one again for uh, close terrain, dug in. It's a company there, so plus one, so net minus one. Um, along with seven. Five plus seven, minus one, nope. Looking for 14 again. We've got a eight plus seven is 15, minus 1 is 14. Got a British suppression marker there. Now this guy. Got a 5, not enough. Let's do the smaller 25-pounders. Um, Got 8 plus 6 is 4, minus 1, just missed. 7, nope. 9 plus 6 is 15 minus 1. That's another suppress marker. Sure would like to get a 12, which I think would do an, a loss to the Germans. Last guy. 9. That's another suppress marker. Probably should have thrown my mortars in, but I didn't declare them. My two remaining company level mortars. Okay, so these guys. Um, I should have said who they're going to attack, I guess, but... Um, that's light because there, they're all going here, and then all these guys over here will go here. So let's start with the eight. We're looking at um, plus one for company level units there. And I think that's it. Uh, they're not concealed. Just kind of looking through what we have here. Yeah, so. Um, might be a big thing. 10 plus 8 is 18 minus 1. Wait, why am I saying minus 1? Oh, plus 1, 19. Um, hmm, that's a good roll. 19. It's going to do two step reductions and a suppress. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything I'm missing. I don't think so. So, uh, Germans suppress these guys and. There are two losses. Um, oof, this is dangerous because there's still more artillery filing in on this spot. Uh, by the way, I kind of whined a little about range fire. Um, looks like when you mass artillery, uh, you get better results when it's close terrain. Okay, so that's two points right there. Um, this guy, I need to roll a one or he's out of the game. Five, he's out of the game. Okay, now these two fives. Roll a five, not enough. Roll a five again, not enough. Let's see what we got here. Divide by two on their rolls. I'm going to roll two dice, one for each. We got a five and a six. Divided by two, rounded up, is three turns out. They're both out of the game. So the next turn, there's just one artillery coming back for the Germans. Okay, they got a suppression there. Now all these guys here. Their res is three. It's gonna be minus one for close terrain. I think that's it. Um, let's see, that means if I roll a 12 plus three minus one, that's 14. Need, needs 12. So I'm just gonna roll four times looking for 12s. Eight, six, nine, Six. Okay, long shot there. Um, let's grab these suppression markers. So these cancel each other out. That leaves two British suppression. Let's not forget these two mortars up here. We'll do the four. Um, 
who would I have targeted? I would have targeted the easier guys. So um, it's a minus one. Eight plus four is 12. Nope, and then we'll do the three level guy, minus one. Five, nope, okay, so they fired. Someday I'll remember everything. Okay, let's figure this out. See, there's 30 here. Two, 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 one times two, two, eight. 30 to eight, it's not quite four to one, so that's three to one. Shifts for the British, four to one, five to one, six to one armored. For the Germans, drops down to five for dug in, four for close terrain, three for engineers. A little tighter here, three to one. I think I got everyone. Uh, here we go. Got an eight, eight on three to one. Hmm. Man, uh, if you're three to one or more, you're pretty, you're looking pretty good in general. So, uh, zero three. Um, okay, let's see what's down in here. I'll put that dug-in marker back in a second. So if I want to hold this hex, I would to save myself the two points it's worth. Um, I would have to eliminate three units. These are all single-step units. They're worth one point each, so I'd be losing three unit three points to save two. If I retreat, save these guys. British will move in, get a pretty key hex. These guys are we'd be close to being cut off, which might be fine. Maybe they just kind of fight for the last few Bohaj hexes, try to hold, keep some points. Maybe that's what I want. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to give up two points to try to preserve three. So. Um, that means if they retreat three hexes, this guy actually cannot retreat three hexes. He can only retreat two. So he's gonna die. That's one point. Gosh darn it. So no matter what, three are being lost. Okay. So now the question is, do I wanna lose two points to preserve two? Now that that's out of there. Or, hmm. I don't have any any other troops to like fill in after two guys die. So, okay, so I have two retreats remaining. They're gonna go one, two. Have them retreat together. I could have retreated them off the map, but I think I'm gonna fight it out for the last bit of bocage here. Okay, British, who are they gonna advance? I think they're gonna Let's see, they still have one more village hex to take. I think they're gonna advance these guys. And these guys. Keep the wounded guys back. Okay. Mm, what else do I have going on here? I probably should have done other declared some other range attacks. I'm not really doing my range attacks well. Uh, I think we're good. Yeah, so that's the British combat phase. Um, let's move on to the German reset phase. I'm going to go ahead and reset the Germans. Okay, they reset. Mortars and infantry gun are ready to fire now. I do have an issue though. Um, they are in jeopardy of being destroyed. What do I want to do? I want to keep these guys here. They're going to get obliterated, probably. But, hmm, hmm. Oh, this is bad. I'm just trying to decide, like, should I keep one guy in there so that he would die? lose a point, and then they'd get the town for two. I'm talking about on the British turn. But I would preserve some guys back here to make it harder. Next turn, to take some more. I think the British are just going to steamroll this. So, uh, yeah, having a hard time defending here. Definitely want to keep the close terrain. So we got eight points in there. Unfortunately, we have a concentric attack coming. 
Yeah, so, by the way, action phase, if I didn't mention it, let's retreat these infantry guns off the game. Okay, and then uh, those mortars. Yeah, I'm gonna retreat them too. Walking right off. I, by the way, I'm not being super thoughtful here and totaling up all the points that are available and, you know, trying to see, you know, if I move two guys, will I have like a one point advantage or anything? I'm just kind of going by gut feel here and we'll see what happens. Um, I just know as the Germans, I was ordered to hold these fields here. So, um, now what? Well, if I can put some guys here, if they get attacked, they can at least retreat off map. I mean, this is going to be massive attack. So we're going to give up the, the town. So we're going to go, ooh, can't get out of here without having my um, hitting line of, what am I trying to say? Without hitting a zone of control. Crud. Okay, these guys are trying to break out of their encirclement. Do you want to keep one behind? Sacrificial? Well, um, that invites an overrun, or a, at least an assault. There's a special kind of over, uh, assault called an overrun, where, where um, I guess AFVs can overrun. I'm not sure if these guys can. I'm just going to ignore it for now, though, because I, either way, they could assault and obliterate that guy, so. I guess he's not going to allow them to assault him either. So they're out of there. Hmm. I suppose these guys will go here. Just trying to hold things here. Do I want to put a fourth here or have a guy behind the lines dig in? Dig in. Just trying to scrounge a little bit of bocage. Yeah, that was the action phase. Did anyone not do anything? Nope. Said all these guys for the combat phase. This guy actually did not do anything, but uh, he is in enemy zone of control, so cannot do a ranged attack. These guys are in enemy zone of control, cannot do a ranged attack. This guy can't see anyone. Um, that's the German turn, and the end of turn four. Catch you on the last turn.